Hi there. Within Rhino, you can use two different viewport projection types. Um, what we're seeing now is a perspective projection type. If I switch that over to parallel, things look different. Both of these view types have advantages and disadvantages and can be used for different situations when you're modeling in Rhino. The first thing to talk about with the perspective viewport is the ability to isolate foreground from background. So for example here, I've got this bunch of cubes and inside I've got a sphere. And let's say I wanted to move the camera towards that sphere. And you can see what's happening in the viewport below when I rotate the camera around this bunch of cubes. Well, I can select the sphere here and then I can press Z and press enter and you can see that the camera is now inside this cube of cubes and is able to orbit around the sphere without any elements getting in the front of the camera. And if I look in this viewport, you can see that the camera point is inside the cube of cubes. That's why there's nothing um, between the camera and the sphere. The next thing to note about the perspective projection is the ability to do section perspectives. That is where you have a clipping plane cut what's in front of the camera and you are cutting the contents so you can see what those contents are and they're usually shaded black or white or whatever it is and you can see the contents behind receding towards the horizon line. As you probably may know, with the perspective uh, view type, you're dealing with converging lines. So let's say I put the camera up like this and you'll note that the lines of this cube the corners um, the edges are, are meeting down to a vanishing point down below this box the edges of the line are also lined up in this direction so there's a there's a vanishing point up out there and likewise there's another vanishing point out towards the left so in the x y and z axes you'll have converging points with the perspectives and you'll also note the vertical lines are not vertical when the camera is aiming down or up, anything other than perfectly horizontal to the ground. Some of the difficulties with uh, the perspective projection are sometimes it's difficult to select things that are in line with each other. So for example, if I move the camera here and I wanted to select this cube here plus the cube all the way behind, I can't really see what's going on behind this cube. So I'd have to zoom out, sort of line up the camera and then zoom in a bit and try and Whoops, I've misselected there. Ah, I've misselected now I'm moving it. So it's difficult to select things that are in line with each other. The last thing I want to talk about with the perspective projection is zooming. So let's say I've got this object. I've zoomed towards it, pressing Z and then spacebar, and it's created a target point in the middle of this object. So as I rotate the camera around it, you'll see that the camera target stays the same, but the camera point rotates around that target. Let's say I wanted to zoom towards the objects in the back. I'm going to set the camera up like this, and I'm going to start scrolling towards this point. And you can see that the camera has gotten smaller and smaller, and eventually it's going to puncture through that original camera target point. Now it has punctured through as I scrolled. It has created a new camera target point right in here, but I wouldn't know where that is in this original viewport without this widget. So I'm going to keep on scrolling towards it and you can see how the camera is getting smaller and smaller again as the camera location gets closer towards the camera target and eventually it's going to puncture through. Now we're on the other side again. It's created another camera target and the camera point remains there. But again, as I zoom, it's going to get closer and closer and eventually you'll puncture through. So this behavior is somewhat unpredictable and it's quite difficult to work with when you are zooming around your model space. The solution to that is to select your objects and constantly reset where that camera target is. And now we look at the parallel projection. Here things are always vertical. So all of the objects with vertical lines are always facing the sky and there's no converging lines. So in any axes none of the lines will converge and that means that everything appears the same size if it is the same size in the model space. So this cube here will appear the same size as this cube back here, given that they are the same real size. This makes things easy when it comes to selection. So I can simply drag, drag again, and select these rows of cubes quite easily without having that perspective distortion 
make things in the foreground bigger and things in the background really small. When using parallel projection, you can print to scale. So in this instance, I'm looking front on towards these cubes. The faces of all of these cubes are in the same plane as the camera. So if I print this now, control P, and I printed it to one to 200 scale, and I got my scale ruler out at one to 200 and measured that edge to that edge, that would be one meter. And from there to there, that would be one meter because they're one meter cubes. If I rotate the camera around the bunch of cubes though, and I tried to scale print this, you'll see things that won't quite work. So if I go control P again, you can see how like the vertical edge of this cube has been compressed. So it's much smaller than it was before. And to lesser extents, this edge has been compressed and this edge has been compressed as well. So if you print to scale using the parallel projection, the only thing that is to true scale is if you measure horizontally across the page. Often when you're doing an isometric for school, you'll be printing out like this and you'll say one to whatever scale. The only thing that is to true scale when you print out is the measurement across the page left to right. The last thing to talk about with the parallel projection is the ability to zoom smoothly. What happens is if I rotate the camera around this cube of cubes and then I wanted to zoom in towards that central sphere again I can zoom and you'll see that what's happening up here is that the extents are narrowing and narrowing but the camera point is not moving so it never actually moves to the inside of these cubes all that's happening is that the field of view is getting smaller and smaller and smaller or narrower I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching